Hey guys, this is actually a video I initially put up on Frugal Pete, my general gaming channel, but then after I put it up I realised, given the subject matter, it's probably something a lot of you would enjoy seeing as well, so excuse the unhardcore sim-like nature of the video, but hopefully a few of you get a kick out of it. Hello YouTube, this is Frugal and long-term viewers of me, particularly on my live streams, will know that this is World of Warships. This is a game I was incredibly excited to get my hands on. I've been playing it since the early access or pre-beta and a little bit through the beta, not so much through the beta, but here we are. I'm recording this video on the eve of the launch on September the 17th, which for me is tomorrow. This game will be available to you all to play, and it is free to play, which means you just need to go and sign up and get an account. Let's get the disclaimers out of the way. There is a link in the show notes below if you want to join the game and be my friend, add me as a friend, or even if you don't, you just want to play the game, use the link in the show notes below. I do get a little bit of a kickback. That's my disclaimer. The other stuff, though, the other disclaimers, like you'll see I've got a premium account here, and I have... These are premium things you pay for with dollar monies. I paid for them. I'm not in any way sponsored or endorsed by the people behind World of Warships. Anyway, let me talk you about. Let me talk you through. Uh, I guess that free to play aspect. It is free to play. You can have a really great experience playing this game without spending a dime. In fact, I did throughout the entire early access and beta. It's fantastic. Whenever you compete in missions and battles, you get experience. You also get credits. Credits are used to upgrade things on your ship. You can see here's my Eerie level one Eerie. I can upgrade the main battery here. I can upgrade the hull and so on and so on. I can also research new hulls. To to move up in tiers. Now when you move up in tiers, the ships get more advanced, they get more abilities, they get faster, more powerful, more survivable in some cases, and so on and so on. That's really where the experience comes in and the credits come in. If you purchase the blooms, as I did, these 6,500 here, what you can do is you can click on your name here and you can exchange the blooms for credits. So that's the pay aspect. Now it's not pay to win. You can certainly go and put all the money you've got into the game and, and buy tens of thousands and thousands and thousands of doubloons, convert them all into exchange credits. Not going to help you a bit. You can't use the tech, the higher tech stuff until you level up, first of all. And buying a higher tier ship does not necessarily make you any better. They're actually a lot harder to control. So it's well worth spending your time and earning your way through the game. The one thing I would recommend you buy, if, it, if, if you get into the game enough that you want to invest some money, is this, the premium account. That boosts your experience. It lets you level up a little bit faster. But as you can see I have had one battle since they reset the accounts I've got 660 experience on level 5 from one battle and it takes 7,000 to go to the next level so even at level 5 you're quite a way in here it's not going to take me more than I guess 10 battles to level up to the next level so progression in this is balanced really really well let me talk you through with this whole UI so I got two ships. You will have two ships when you sign up for your account. I've got the Eerie over here and the Hashidate over here. And as I said, you can click on these things here to upgrade them. And each ship also has statistics. You can see some of them on the right of the screen as well. So a survivability number, not very survivable, uh, not very powerful in terms of its AA, uh, artillery, sorry, not very powerful in terms of its AA, pretty maneuverable, pretty good at hiding because it's quite small. Similar stats with the Hashidate here, almost identical, just that's a Japanese ship, that's an American ship. At the top of the screen here, you can see the tech tree. Ships in World of Warships are categorized as either aircraft carrier, battleships, cruisers, destroyers, and premium. Aircraft carriers obviously have aircraft. That's the big deal with aircraft carriers. And often when you're doing a battle with normal human beings, the main primary focus is to not only protect your base, but also protect the aircraft carrier. They can send out reconnaissance aircraft. They can send out fighters. They can send out bombers and all sorts of stuff. Pretty cool ships. I've actually not used the aircraft carriers at all. Battleships, very very big, very powerful, very scary, can take a lot of damage. Think of those as your tank. Cruisers, jack of all trades, destroyers, I like to think of them as rogues. Very fast, very sneaky, not very survivable, but very, very good at getting in the thick of things of trouble in a hurry as well and you can see there are tiers here so my tier one ship very simple not very good stats all the way down to the des moines down here for example you can see a survivability is incredibly high artillery very very good artillery very good aa defense and so on and so on so obviously as you're going up the tiers the ships are getting a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better and you can choose once you reach certain levels one two three and so on to diversify so rather than sticking with a cruiser tree you could start saying i'm going to go down the destroyer branch. I'm going to aim to get myself into a Farragut and I'm going to do all my uh, battles in destroyers and level up my destroyer ranks, my experience and stuff so I can get into that particular hull, which was a common trait um, throughout the early access and the betas. 
Only three nations in here currently, USA and Japan. I'm not sure if that's gonna change when this launches tomorrow. USSR is just premium content. Let's look at these for a second. Let's bring up the Aurora, which I remember going up against oh, in a few battles. Notice this thing can launch torpedoes. So not only do you have guns on board now, you also have torpedo launchers and torpedoes cause devastating amounts of damage when they hit things, but they're also very, very hard to make hit things. But good fun, really, really good fun. Anyway. Two types of battle, co-op battle, and then random battle. Once you get beyond level one, you can do the random battle, which is two teams of humans going head to head to try to kill each other. Know how to play before you do that, which is why they lock you into co-op for a little while when you first start playing. The reason I say that is more than I think, well, maybe not more than World of Tanks, but more than many other games out there, it really does pay to understand what each ship's role is. So it's no good getting in a battleship and just charging straight into the heat of battle, getting yourself in the middle of six or seven other ships who blow the crap out of you. That's not a good plan. You will die. Know the strengths and weaknesses of your ship. So a battleship strength is its ability to kind of hang back and just rain down massive amounts of firepower on the enemy but still survive if they absolutely have to so learn those things do co-op battles which is you and other humans versus bots you get little tips when you start those showing you what to do let me start a battle here actually yeah let me just go ahead and start a battle and then once we finish the battle you'll see how all that works and i might start upgrading this eerie i'm probably going to stick with cruisers quite a while because i did enjoy them quite a lot so click on battle and it cues you. There is about 10,000, so there's 10,000 or 100,000 people playing right now. And you can see it doesn't take any time at all to get into a battle, which is kind of cool. Notice the little tips you get up here, capturing areas, enemies, and so on. And notice the map. So we are trying to capture three points. The other team is also trying to capture three points. Obviously they're starting directly opposite us. Here are all the ships. It looks like we're all cruisers. So pay attention to the map when you're playing because you really want to stick with your with your team um, and not be a lone wolf as it were. Score 1,000 points for the enemy team. Now, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see HE, AP. I'm gonna press number two twice. General quarters. That's loading my armor piercing rounds. They're very good at penetrating armor. Once that armor's penetrated, we'll switch to the high explosives and start raining fire. Here are the other ships in my little fleet. I'm gonna to try to stick with them. I'm in the middle of the map, which is probably the worst place to be because I can be attacked by everybody. I'm turning the ship with the Q and E keys or I can use A and D and go hard to starboard, hard to port. I'm just going pretty much hard to uh, starboard right now. I could have just done with, done with the D key. Use a W to increase and decrease the throttle. So I head full. Whoever just fired is, is being a little bit silly. If we were playing against humans, he pretty much just gave our position away, which is never cool. Now you notice I've got these reticles. I've got a little cursor in the middle of the screen which shows where I want to be pointing, and then there's little circles that try to eventually catch up because the guns turn realistically, so you can't just point and shoot at something. It is not um, Call of Duty or uh, Modern Warfare or something like that with boats. It really isn't. It does require a little bit of thought and strategy, which is why I like it. So you can't just point and shoot. You need to wait for those guns to track onto target. I can zoom in. You can see I can zoom in here and zoom all the way in. I have a quick key, I think it's the right mouse, lets me zoom out and get a good overview, which is important. If you start fixating on what you're shooting, that's called target fixation in flying anyway. So it's a good idea to periodically zoom out just to see who else is taking pot shots at you, which is kind of cool. Anyway, loading up on my armor piercing shells. I'm just gonna stick with the rest of the fleet over here. We're gonna try to find the bad guys and cause some damage. It is a little slow initially as everybody gets into position. That's kind of one of the uh, cool things of the game. If, if you don't like that pace, then this probably isn't the game for you. Oh, there is a ship on the left. He's 10 kilometers away. He's probably too far. I'm going to point at him, press X. No target detected. Now he's detected. Now, if I shoot, I'm probably not going to hit him. Notice I am side onto him. You can see from the uh, diagram, bottom left of the screen, I've got my port side guns all pointed towards him. He is just about within range. So I'm going to try to lead the target now as much as I can. There is another faster ship coming in behind him. Oh, we're getting some hits now. So let's see if we can get some penetrating hits. I'm going to zoom out and take my own advice. We're going behind an island. We can't keep firing indefinitely. I did defend my base. Can I keep firing over this hill? Let's see. Oh, there we go. No, I hit the hill, but we're safe. So I'm going to zoom all the way out now. Much more ships now on the left. I need to be careful. Ship happens. There's that one. We'll click on him. Let's lead him and fire. See if we can get any hits. I think I didn't lead him enough. He is really cruising. I'm going to start slowing down now. So that I don't just 
careen into what appears to be a significant fight that's going on over here. There's another ship that my teammates have spotted behind that small island, which is how I can see him but not see him, if that makes any sense at all. But he is within range. I could possibly get a shot. Let's try and lead him and shoot now. Oh, two, no, not enough, not enough. Gonna lead him a lot more. A lot more. Let's zoom out, we're good. Get a bit more speed out of this ship now. Am I... I'm good, I'm hitting, I'm hitting. I'm gonna start hitting him some more. I'm not gonna collide with anything. I head full. I'm coming into the gun range, looking at the mini-map now of all the enemy ships. I need to get a move on be less of a sitting duck. Oh, that's a long way away. But we did get the hit. That's probably it for him, though. Let's move around. Ah, oh, gosh darn. There. That guy. Let's lead him again. He's already on fire, so we're going to switch to HE. I'm going to check my position. I'm not going to ram anybody. We're good. I'm on high explosive now. See if we can exacerbate the fire that he's already fighting. And we did. We got some hits. You get points based on the kind of hits you do, whether you start a fire or not, and the part of the enemy ship he's down. So if you hit the bridge, for example, you get a lot more points than just hitting the hull. It does make sense to try to hit the waterline if you possibly can. Come on, load, fire! Drink up, my hearties, yo-ho. I did, I did get the hits on him. A head full, let's go. I do have ships really tracking on me now. I'm drawing a straight line, which is not a particularly good idea. He has run aground, though. He is a sitting duck. If you run aground, you have to back up. It takes a while for that to happen. This is why this enemy ship here, which is AI, good at the AI, is actually moving in front to cover his teammate. How cool is that? Let's turn around. I'm gonna go hard to port. Oh, just narrowly missing with those shells. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. Let's go ahead full now. Catch up with my teammates here, get in formation. I think you can see it is a little bit slower paced than most other games of its ilk, such as World of Warplanes or World of Tanks, but oh my god is it a beautiful looking game and it really plays so well. Um, I love it, I really love it. I had so much fun with this in the betas and the early access, mainly the early access. I can't wait to see a lot more players and hopefully some of you in it as well. Notice I'm trying to keep my ship at all times side on to these enemy ships. I'm slowing down, I'm just making sure nobody's shooting at me. We're on the armor piercing shells again. He is a small target because he's facing right at me. I'm going to start trying to back up here, which is probably not a good idea because I'm going to basically stop dead in the water to do that. You can see I'm slowing and I'm slowing. You can't just turn on a dime. You have to wait for that uh, inertia and the speed to come off. But that guy is so close to dying. So is he, but he's gone. He's not my kill. I'm not sure I'm going to get any kills actually in this mission, but I'm having a blast. I am so close! I got him! I destroyed the Enemy ship! Enemy cruiser foundered. Enemy cruiser foundered. Alright, so let's go head full now. Get that full left turn in. We're doing well. Now notice I'm a head full, but we're still backing up and going the wrong way. You see that? Be aware. Don't run into islands. Keep on hitting that right mouse button, zooming out, seeing where you're at. I do expect to be doing a few more videos on this as time goes on. I'm going to be doing some collaborative videos with the Code Zero boys, because I know they're quite into it. And you'll be able to see some of the... Uh, later ships obviously as I start going up in the ranks but you can see there we scored 37 hits destroyed one ship defended our base two times and as a result picked up 20,726 credits 312 experience and 16 of those uh, uh, doubloons as well so as you can see you don't have to spend money in the game to actually make good progress in the game it, it is pretty well balanced let's look at that team score I was third in the team not a bad performance I guess this guy had a chest I'm surprised he didn't do a lot more damage and detailed report here we go you can see more detailed stuff that I had I caused 13,653 damage with armor piercing shells 891 damage with high explosives I didn't manage to set any fires unfortunately but I did sink who did I sink what did I sink I actually can't see what I sank but anyway let's go back to port once you get back to port with your hard-earned credits, oh, by the way, look at these missions up here. If you click on the missions, you get 35,000 credits if you destroy a ship with uh, torpedoes or 10 torpedo hits. 35,000 credits for causing 20,000 damage of any kind to enemy ships in one battle. Kind of cool. 50,000 credits for causing 30,000 damage of any kind to enemy ships in one battle. So these are daily missions that come up that give you extra rewards, which really get you moving if you don't want to spend any real hard-earned cash. And 
If you've never played it before, there's no reason to. I didn't want to do that. I'm going to leave the queue, actually. Let's go back over here. I'm going to click on my Eerie. Look at my modules. Now, let's start upgrading and stuff. So, if I go for the Eerie Hull B at this point, What's it going to give me? It's going to add 1,000 hit points to my ship. It's going to improve survivability by one and maneuverability by one. So I'm going to click on that, left click, and research it for 180 credits. There you go. Those things. Plenty of those will research. Confirm. Yes. You can see the, the costs for these things are not too bad. Now, having researched it, I can buy it. I can purchase and mount this hull and upgrade my hull. So absolutely, we'll do that. My hull slightly improved. Let's look at these guns here. These guns, the rate of fire actually decreases to 7.5 rounds per minute. Um, the turn time increases. So my rate of fire slows down. My turn time is slower as well. But look at the damage. Armor-piercing shells do an extra 800 damage. If you're going for those daily missions, you're going to need that. Um, HE shells, high explosive shells, also do an additional 400 damage per shell. And my artillery score on this vessel goes up by 19. So although I'm trading speed of those guns tracking and firing, I'm getting a considerable boost in terms of the damage they do. Let's research with my uh, experience there, I think that is. Yes, that is experience, and then I can spend my credits, there we go, on purchasing and mounting those guns. <laughs> now we're looking good. And as you go further up, you'll get weapons, uh, the ability to get um, uh, weapons which use premium, con uh, premium ammunition and consumables as well. And you'll see all sorts of different consumables, like repair kits and all sorts of lovely stuff like that. Anyway, that is World of Warships. It is a game I personally love. This is my first impressions. It is slightly biased because I personally love it but as I said I didn't do anything I didn't get anything for free here other than the fact it's a free to play game and you all could do it the only thing I am getting is if you click on that sign up link and join me in the game I'm getting a little kickback for that so please do support your local frugal as always my name is frugal thank you so much for watching and until next time I will see you all extremely soon